Okay, uh, Lemon Law is going to be law by the 1st of September. So, you all see yourself as a business and as a consumer. For those consumers, they're very happy. So, as a consumer, you're very happy. As a business, you may have some concern. So, today I'm trying to pass a message to you, don't be so concerned. There are, you have ways of protecting yourself against unscrupulous consumers. Huh? Because some of them are unreasonable. So how do you help yourself as a business against unreasonable? Even before the Lemon Law, there are already unreasonable consumers. You get people complaining to you. After the Lemon Law, same thing will happen. It's not because of the Lemon Law, it's because of the people. Singaporeans are now more fighting, they, they like to argue now, they like to make claims and all that. So it's not because of the lemon law, just to understand that, okay? So the slides uh, are not in accordance to your notes. Uh, so the sequence a bit different. I changed some of the sequence. So you look at the notes, uh, it's slightly different. Uh. Okay, so we start on the lemon law. Okay, why, why was that lemon law? Because previously we received a lot of complaints about defective mobile phones. You see at the first five, electrical, electronic, furniture, computer, model car, first five major complaints, defects, is usually electrical products, okay, including TVs, uh, because it comes under electrical and electronic. People are complaining about defective products. Okay, that's the reason why lemon law is being introduced now. But this is complaint is only from 2006, a uh, long time ago. You look at the stats, mobile phones, big complaints, but by against big businesses that sell mobile phones, not against the small uh, shops, HDB shops. Uh, electro compliance, also big businesses. Motor vehicles is parallel importers, they sell defective products. But you see the statistics, the amount number of defects are for motor vehicle is actually 0 0.1, very small. The others are 0 0.06. So you already make your money, only 0 0.1, 0 0.06 people are saying the product is defective. Right? So don't be so concerned about defects because lemon law is about defects. All those defects also, if you look at the data statistics, they are settled, settled through case or through the court system, small claims tribunal. So it's not as bad as you may think it is. The more obvious problem is motor car. Huh? You buy motor car. This is not your industry, but secondhand motor cars, parallel imports, got problem about lemon law. Okay, before we talk about lemon law, we just talk about what is the present law. What is the present law before the 1st of September? is the Sale of Goods Act. I think most of you are aware of the Sale of Goods Act. It's very obvious to you when you sell your TV or antennas, the Sale of Goods Act will apply. So roughly we go through the Sale of Goods Act very fast. It talks about sale of goods. Goods sold do not conform to the contract. So if you sell a TV, the TV does not conform to the contract. You do not conform if it's an express term. If in the written contract I say I'm giving you a 21-inch black-colored TV, I must give you a 21-inch black-colored TV. If I give you a 30-inch red-colored TV, I do not conform to the express terms of the contract. That is a breach of the Sale of Goods Act. Implied term is understood when you sell a TV that the TV must work. No have to say. You cannot be selling somebody a TV and then you switch on. From the very beginning, you switch on, it doesn't work. So it must be of satisfactory quality. Okay? That's the implied term. It's implied. It's understood for everyone that it must be of satisfactory quality. What is satisfactory quality? So you say, oh, this TV is not of satisfactory quality. But what do you mean by? There are all many, many kinds of satisfactory quality. So what is it? Fitness for all the purposes for which the goods or the kind in question are commonly supplied. So I sell you TV, it must be, you must be able to see it's a color TV, color must come out, it must last, it must be fit for the purpose. 
if, if I'm a blind man, I want to buy, buy a dog to lead me, I tell the pet shop, can you find me a dog that can lead my blind man? Then you must find me a special dog. You cannot find me a dog that goes run around everywhere, chase other lady dogs. Then the blind man is a big, big problem. Right? He'll be running around following the dog. So the dog also must be of special quality, must be of satisfactory quality. It must be fit for the purpose. If a blind man wants a guide dog, the dog must be fit for the purpose. Appearance and finish, the TV must look nice, there mustn't be scratches, must appear nice, the shape must be right there, cannot be wrongly shaped. Freedom from minor defects, there mustn't be minor defects. If, it's not, if there's a minor defect, it's not of satisfactory quality. Safety, the product you sell must be safe. If it's not safe, it's not of satisfactory quality. It's very important for cars. We don't want a TV to explode while you're watching it. Yeah, harm, hurt anybody. There is a safety issue. Durability, you expect a TV to last a few years. It must be durable. It cannot be some TV after one month cannot use anymore. Then it's not durable. That's not of satisfactory standard. So currently, uh, if your product, the product is defective, what can the consumer do? Consumer can reject the goods, say, I don't want this defective goods, I don't want this not satisfactory quality, and ask a refund. So he can only re reject the goods, ask for a refund. It's not clear how fast must the consumer approach the business to say there's a defect. It's not clear under the Sale of Goods Act. There is no right for the consumer to ask you to repair the TV or replace the TV. He just says, give me back my money. I don't want this TV. Take back this TV. He has no right under the Sale of Goods Act to ask for a repair or a replacement. So the task force was set up after case approach MTI. MTI is in charge of uh, Lemon Law, so they look, set up a task force. They look at the UK law, European law, and US law. Th they already have this law. In America, the Lemon Law is 1980s. In UK, it's 1990s. Europe, a bit earlier, but we are all far behind. But they found that the Lemon Law already found, most of the things are already found under the Sale of Goods Act. Only minor amendments are needed. So don't be afraid, only minor amendments are needed. They recommend that you have special provisions for repair and replacement. That's all. Lemon Law introduces repair and replacement. For the US, Lemon Law is about talks about new car, but our Lemon Law applies to all products, new or, or secondhand. So there's a bit different. But UK and European Union, it applies to new and secondhand cars and secondhand products. So what are Lemon Laws? Huh? So you remember the four R, if it's a lemon, we assume that there's something wrong with the product or you're giving me a product that you're not supposed to give me. That means you give me a black TV when I ask for a white TV. Then what can the retailer, consumer ask? The consumer can ask the retailer to repair, replace. Two R, repair or replace. Cannot repair, cannot replace, then reduction in price or refund. So for you, I spent 45 minutes, all you need to know is this 4 R, that's it, that's lemon law. Repair or replace, reduction in price or refund. Category A, category B. Category A is the first step, category B is the second step. The consumer cannot come to you and say, I want refund, which is the fourth number, the fourth item. He cannot demand immediately come to you. Die, die, you must refund to me. No, huh? It's, it goes step by step. So I, I elaborate later what is the step by step. Okay, so how was form? You know, uh, it, it was in 2008, now 2012. So the government took four years to think about this and to pass the law. So it's not done in a haste. The task force chaired by MTI and K Central Committee member other associations like SRA, Harvey Norman, Nokia, LG Electronics were consulted. Some of them even sit in the committee, the task force. Okay. Just now I mentioned about sale of goods that you find is the same, almost the same. 
fail to conform to the contract at the time of delivery. The crucial word is time of delivery, breach of express term, breach of implied term, same as the sale of goods act. But the crucial date is it is a lemon at the time of delivery. So lemon law applies on 1st of September. So you only apply when the product is bought on or after 1st of September and is delivered on or after 1st of September. At the moment today, lemon law doesn't apply. You buy any product today, the defect occurred in October, lemon law doesn't apply. But you can go under sale of goods act. Similar to the sale of goods act, lemon law provision applies when goods do not conform to the sales contract at the time of delivery. There's a breach of express or implied term. Express description and picture on a packet of rice is a white rice, but actual product is basmati rice. Actually, the retailer is giving you something more expensive because basmati rice is more expensive than a white rice. But the retailer is nice. He gives you basmati rice at the same price as a white rice. You are a blur consumer and say, no, it's a lemon. I want white rice. He can ask for the white rice. Although, it's not a defect. But because it doesn't comply with the terms of the contract. The term of the contract says, you give me white rice. I give you basmati rice, better rice, still don't want, fine. You can, consumer can say, no, I don't want the basmati rice. You must give me the white rice. But it's still a lemon, huh? When you buy the rice, it's moldy. Bring home one, two days, you open the packet, it's moldy. That is not satisfactory quality. It's an implied term. It's expected that when you sell rice, the rice can be cooked and eaten. So that is implied term rice. Okay? You can apply this to your TVs and antennas also. Must be of satisfactory quality. Okay, now this is the thing that makes people very worried because the court will presume the defect to exist if within six months of delivery. So, if on the 1st of September, uh, let's say 2nd of September, I buy a TV and the TV is delivered on the 3rd of September, Lemon Law will apply on the 3rd of September because there's a delivery on the 3rd of September. 4th of September, Within the six months, it's presumed, it's assumed, the court assumed if there's something wrong from the 3rd of September, the six months, it's assumed that the thing is wrong from the day that you deliver the product. That means the defect occurred from the day you deliver the product, which is the 3rd of September. So this is presumption. But this presumption is rebuttable, can be overridden. It's not like the drugs, presum uh, drugs, re drugs uh, presumption. If you are deemed to traffic in drugs, you are dead, you are hanged. Here, it's deemed that there's a presumption, it's deemed that it's the, the effect occurred from the first day, but you can rebut it. And after I go, some circumstances, the law may not apply, lemon law may not apply. But this one makes people worry about this presumption. Okay? And the defect can occur in the seven months, eight months, 24 months, 30 months, six years. But if it's six years, it's easy for you to say it's wear and tear rather than a defect. But after six months, there's no presumption. The consumer must prove after six months that the product is defective when you sold him the product. So it's not easy. If you use a car for six years, then, then the tire become bald. He can say it's a defect. But I can say, do you mean expect tire to last six months? Wear and tear. So lemon law doesn't apply. Right? So don't be worried about this presumption. Sometimes the, the older the product, the easier for you to show that it's not my fault. It's your own fault. You use it for so long. Don't expect me to replace it for you. Okay? Any question? Yeah. You keep it. Then there's, there's no presumption. The presumption is from the date of delivery, whether you use it or you don't use it. But the fact that you only use it one day, 
strengthens your case because it's not likely that after one day only it gets spoiled. That means it's really something spoiled. But if you use it for six months, then within the six months, there's still a presumption. But how, will I believe you when you say that you, you never use it for six months? Why? You have to really convince me that you buy a car never used for six months. I say, I will doubt your, your statement. People, when they buy the car, they want to show off. They don't keep it for six months. They keep it in cold storage. Anyway, there's a different issue. Lah. Normally, when I buy, I use it immediately. Yes. Yeah, if 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 you come back eight months later. Yeah. yeah. Two days now, uh, even you keep it in the closet now, uh, you won't get moldy. Uh, but if you're telling me I bought this rice six months later it's it's moldy, then I say maybe it's because you didn't keep it in a particular place or you keep it it's exposed to the sun, encourages the worms to grow. Uh, we are talking about, but it's a presumption is there, it's presumed that when you deliver to me, it's, the longer you keep the rice, uh, the easier for me to say the presumption doesn't apply because it's because you go and put it in some dark place or some place where encourages the worms to develop. But if today I buy tomorrow when I try to open to try to cook, uh, then there's a modi. Uh, I don't think you can have a defense. Right? Yeah. So the exception, uh, six months, it doesn't apply unless the seller can prove otherwise. You yourself can show it's not a defect. It's actually something else. It's the consumer himself who caused the defect. Okay? Uh, but first, you must show that you buy the product from this retailer, right? You must show me where's the receipt, where's the evidence that you buy from me. Secondly, you must show me that there is a defect. You guys cannot give me a handphone, uh, you buy a handphone, tomorrow you come back. This handphone is defective. Presumption apply. Therefore, I get a new handphone. I will ask you, prove me that you bought from me. Secondly, where's the defect? Show me the defect. Now, if there's a defect, then I can say, oh, this defect, it's not caused by me. Because if I use a handphone, I go to second story building, the handphone drop, it gets damaged. I can show by evidence that this type of damage only occur if you drop something from 100 feet high. Then you rebut the presumption. It's not caused by the manufacturer, it's caused by you. You throw into the, your, your handphone goes into the toilet bowl, exposed to water, corrosion, even within six months. Not my fault, your fault. Who asked you to bring it to the toilet? You put it in a washing machine. Ah, but this is right. presumption you can show otherwise. Okay? Sometimes the presumption doesn't apply because it is the goods is not will not last more than six months. Milk, your milk, liquid milk can last two weeks. So after two weeks it's gone. So it cannot use the presumption because presumption talks about six months. So the presumption for milk will only be two weeks. Okay, same, same example of, if I buy a balloon, uh, somebody goes to carnival, he blows a balloon for me, uh, sell for my children. Uh, how long do you think the balloon will last? One day, two days? So presumption will not apply to a balloon. After two, three days, that's it. The balloon will just deflate. If I sell you a helium-filled balloon, maybe it can last one week, two weeks. After two weeks, you also will deflate. So presumption may not apply up to six months. Many, many products, you cannot use a presumption, especially food. Food cannot last long. How can you use a six-month presumption? For food, you're supposed to eat it within 24 hours. Right? The, the people who eat the Indian roja and die, yes, presumption will apply. Because within two hours, two, one day, they had stomach ache, and then they, one of them actually died, died, the one in Geelang. So that presumption may apply because it was consumed within one, two days. But you cannot... Five months later, say, oh, I got stomach ache. No, the presumption doesn't apply and proof also doesn't apply. Okay? So this is the time frame. Huh? First, you deliver the car, first month, second month, third month. On the fifth month, there is a defect. So presumption apply. 
So what can the consumer do? He got something wrong with the car. It's, we assume that it's clear that something wrong with the car. He can demand repair or replace. He can demand. But not the answer is he doesn't get it because he can demand refund, but you can offer repair or replace. The first step that a retailer can do, okay, something wrong with your car, I will repair for you or I will replace. I will not refund. The consumer is very unreasonable. He asks for a refund. Okay, this car has something wrong. I want a full refund of the price of the car. You as a retailer can say, no. I have repair services. I can arrange for a motor car repair to repair for you. I will repair. No, I will replace for you with another second-hand car. You have this choice. Consumer don't, can demand, but you can remedy, give the remedy. The first remedy is you can offer repair or replace. Right? So second remedy is, of course, reduction in price or refund. If he wants to keep the product, then he asks for reduction in price. Uh, for refund, he has to return the product to you and get a refund. Okay? So there's a two stage. Huh? First stage is you can ask for repair or replacement, but the retailer did not give the remedy. He can, because of the cost and certain factors. So, example I give you: a consumer buys a second-hand TV for hundred dollars, but there is a defect within the six months or even after the six months. If the cost of repairing the defect is expensive, because you got to send your technician to the house, the the bulb the bulb costs more than hundred dollars. You don't even have to repair. What you can do is you offer the second one, which is replacement. Replace that second-hand TV with another second-hand TV worth $100. So you also have a choice. Between repair and replacement, if you find that repair is not suitable, you can offer replacement. Consumer cannot say no. Because sometimes you find that replacement is cheaper than repair. If you have to send the product to America to repair, I understand Samsonite bags, huh? have to be sent to America. If you buy the bag, the cost of sending it to America is so, so expensive. Why should I bring it to repair? I will give you a replacement. I will, I will do something else. I give you a reduction in price or a refund. Why should I spend the money sent by sea? It will take six, seven months to go to reach America, six, seven months to come back to Singapore. That's not a good remedy. The other, the other remedies are better. So you all have a choice. Huh? Consumer doesn't have that choice. He can demand, but you can. Second stage, sometimes repair or replacement is not done. So if I promise to repair, I must do it within a reasonable time. So if I'm Singtel, Starhub, or M1, you come to me, there's a defective handphone. I can say, go to the service center, Nokia service center, but I must get Nokia to do it fast. I cannot get Nokia to take one year to repair my handphone. If Nokia takes one year, I can say, sorry, I don't want repair. I want a replacement. It must be done fast. And it must not be inconvenient to the consumer. So if I send it to Nokia and it's really going to take six months, Nokia should do give me a replacement handphone temporarily. While I'm repairing your handphone, please use my handphone is not inconvenient to the consumer. And the consumer cannot say, I want a replacement now because you didn't repair it properly. But please don't expect the consumer to go to Nokia Service Center 10 times. It's very inconvenient because I got to wait for a few hours every time. Then I say, I don't want repair, I want replacement. So there's a lot of discretion. Sometimes you cannot repair or replace. If I sell you, somebody happened to be rich and I s deliver to you the Mona Lisa. You buy the Mona Lisa for $1 million. I deliver to you. When it comes to me, it's all damaged, completely damaged, badly damaged. I can't repair. So you cannot demand, don't care, I want a new Mona Lisa. Firstly, you cannot repair. Secondly, you cannot replace because there's only one Mona Lisa. So under that circumstances, repair and replacement is not possible then the consumer say then what then i give you reduction in price or re 
be fun. And if it's the Mona Lisa, why would I want a Mona Lisa where it's all de defaced? I cannot even see a smiling face. Then I get full refund. Because I'm getting nothing. I pay you $1 million, I get something that's almost useless. But if the consumer say, never mind, I want to keep that picture because the artist's signature is there. I want to paste it on my wall to show people that it's by Leonardo da Vinci. I don't know who the, when the artist. Then you don't get a full refund because you get some value out of it. Then I give you a reduction in price of partial refund. So that's why it's, what I'm trying to say is that sometimes it's not like must, must, must. Huh? It depends on the circumstances. Sometimes it's the first remedy, sometimes it's the fourth remedy, depending on the facts of the case. Everybody can be flexible. Lah. Okay, any question? If you still, uh, you can ask questions. So are you clear up to the, this moment? Okay, then now, sometimes the consumer, even if there's a defect, the consumer cannot ask for a remedy. Why? Because they damage the item themselves. Example, they drop it from the second story, talking to their friend, then they drop it, they cause it, not the manufacturer or the Singtel cause it. Okay, they drop the handphone into a washing machine, they misuse it and cause the fault. Example, they watch, I think, uh, I think this is uh, their fault. Uh, I don't know whether you all in the industry agree with me. Uh. Somebody watched the TV non-stop without switching off for 30 days straight. If something happened to the TV, you think, is it the manufacturer's fault? You think the consumer's fault? I think it's the consumer's fault. It's a couch potato. What the hell are you watching TV for 30 days non-stop? People do switch off the TV. Uh, TV still need rest, you know. They're not human beings, but they also need rest, you know. So it's your fault. It's not the quality of the product. It's your fault. You're going to use it so long. Okay, they try to be smart, they try to repair it themselves, then they make it worse, then it's their fault. Or they get somebody else, they get a motor car repairer to repair a Mercedes Benz. He used wrong parts, he, used, he cannot use original, he don't know how to repair. He makes the Mercedes Benz worse. Whose fault? Consumer's fault for engaging a third party to repair the Mercedes Benz. Right? That's how they're not liable. So if you can show all this, you don't have to pay the consumer. Or the consumer knew about the fault before they bought the goods. What is this? Then be honest. If you, you are displaying a TV and there's a crack, before the consumer buy, tell him there's a crack. Do you want with the crack? If the consumer see it and he's pointed out to him, yes, I want to buy. Then he cannot say there's a defect later because he accepted it as it is. This is where you tell him. Huh? Also, if you do, even if you don't tell him, he cannot be pretend to be blind. If there's a big crack and you show him, okay, this TV I'm selling you, and there's a big crack, he's supposed to know. He cannot say, I didn't see it. Uh, so this is two circumstances. Where you point out to the consumer or when he's supposed to, all consumers are expected to inspect the goods before they take delivery. Okay? And they're supposed to be able to see things that can be seen with the naked eye. So I thought about lemon, 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 lemon is about goods. Huh? It's not about services, it's not about land, it's not about house, it's about goods. Whatever you sell as goods is lemon. What are goods? Goods include things that you actually pass to you lah, because it includes electronic goods. Huh? I don't have to go further. Cars, model cars, stationary apparel. Huh? You sell online, also lemon law apply. Doesn't mean you sell online, you escape from lemon law. But the problem with online, if the online company is from China, you got problem with defective product, are you going to go China to ask him to repair for you? So you buy online, this is the risk you take. Very convenient, easy to pay, pay by credit card. But once there's a something problem, if that company has got no office in Singapore, how are you going to get it solved? But online, lemon law apply. If I sell you a TV from online, lemon law will apply to that TV. Okay? Also, consumer not entitled to remedy if they simply change their mind 
and no longer want the item. Example, this one very common among ladies. I don't, don't blame me. Uh. I think so. Uh. They buy a pair of shoes from one shop and later find another pair from another shop and then change his mind. I put here his mind. Uh, so, you know, you go to you go to any other shopping center. Sure, got a few shops selling the same thing. Then you buy, the next minute you go to another shop. Oh, yeah, I make my mistake. Man. Then you go back to the first shop. Can you change or not? Cannot. Uh. You cannot change your mind. There's not a lemon. So when you buy things, make sure you spend time, make a decision, don't change. But if there's a defect, then you can actually go back. But there's no defect, you cannot just suka suka change your mind. Okay? Okay, this is also lemon doesn't apply, it's wear and tear. Right? Because the defect may occur six years later, but six years later is wear and tear. Give you an example. Nowadays, you can buy a slipper for $1. No? Don't expect the slipper to last three years. Uh. After one year, wear and tear, you get so thin, uh, you cannot use. Don't after three years, you come back and say, this is a lemon, this is a defect. I want a new slipper. No way, uh, because wear and tear apply. Depending on the quality of the product, how much you buy, what's the price you pay. Of course, you buy a $100 slipper, you expect the slipper to last a few years. You buy a $1 slipper, you get nothing. Okay, what's not included? Uh, lemon law doesn't apply to all kinds of services. So your maid service, your bride service, your waiter service, your restaurant service, any kind of services uh, doesn't apply. But some things are part service, part goods. So that means part, part of the law apply, part of the law doesn't apply. A mechanic, motor car repairer, repair, repair your car is a service. But sometimes he replaces parts. That becomes goods. So part of the contract, lemon law will apply. Part of the contract, service law, con contract service law will apply. But it's quite clear, waiter service is a service. Maid service, bride service. You don't sue the, you don't take action against the maid agency for a defective maid. You don't take action against the bride agency for a defective bride. Okay? You don't the Vietnamese government will say what you are you telling me all my brides are defective. Uh, you think what Vietnamese girls are so horrible. Uh, you get into trouble, okay? So but but there is defective dogs, defective cats. Why you tell me why? I just tell you uh, under the law, animals are goods. So you can Say that I bought a defective animal, defective dog. But how do you repair a defective dog? So the word repair, not suitable. It should be sent to the vet to cure. So when you use the word repair for dogs, change it to send to the vet to cure. Because if the dog is sick, it's a defective dog, but it can be cured by sending to the vet. Right? Doesn't apply to rental of equipment, anything that you rent, like your photostatic machine, uh, motor car rental, lemon law doesn't apply. Houses and land are not goods. Goods doesn't talk about houses and land. Houses and lands are real property, they're not goods. So you cannot talk about defective house. You cannot talk about defective land. Uh, it applies, doesn't apply to business to business. So if you sell your TV to a sole proprietor who's also selling TV, lemon law will not apply. But sale of goods act may apply. So you take action for business to business, you take action under sale of goods act or under your contract with the other business, but you cannot take action under lemon law. Lemon law only apply when the business sell to a consumer like you and I. So in your case, you sell a TV to consumers who want to watch it at home. Then lemon law will apply. It does not apply between consumer and consumer. So if I own a car, I sell a car to him, lemon law doesn't apply because it's consumer to consumer. It's not business to consumer. What will apply will be maybe sale of goods act or contract law because when I sell a car as a consumer to you as a consumer, I will enter into a special contract or implied contract or whatever, but that is not lemon law. That is other law. Don't forget, we are just concentrating on lemon law. There are many other laws that you can use and the consumer can use. 
and they can use a combination. They can use Lemon Law, they can use Sale of Goods Act, they can use the actual contract law, the contract that you enter into between the parties. They also can use that. Right? So be aware of that. Today I'm just concentrating on Lemon Law. Second hand goods, second hand vehicles are also included, but second hand satisfactory quality will depend on the satisfactory quality. You don't expect a nine year old car to be as good as a one day old car. When you buy a nine year old car, you expect that sometimes it rains, water may seep through into your car. But you expect a nine year old car to be able to move you from this place to your office. At least it still must be of a satisfactory quality but not as a standard, as good as a one-day-old car. Okay, So for second-hand car and goods, it's subject to the age, time of delivery, and the price paid. If I sell you a $30 shoe, which you can get nowadays, the cheapest shoe for men is about $39.99. Don't expect this $39.99 to be as lasting as a $100 shoe because of the price quality is not as good as expected. But it still must be able to use that shoe for one year, right? Because I know I'm wearing a shoe, this shoe lasts me about one and a half years. Every day you go to work, right? But if you buy a thousand dollar shoe, you expect it to last you three, three, four years. If you wear, buy a boots, you buy a boots, maybe the boots can last you five years. So it depends on the price and the uh, type of things, the product that is sold to you. But it still must be of a certain satisfactory standard. Still must be of satisfactory standard. The standard varies according to the circumstances. Display sets, discounted items with minor defects, still a lemon. You cannot use non-refundable, non-exchangeable if it's a lemon. Because lemon says you can repair, you can refund, you can replace. So when you say non-refundable, non-exchangeable, you're going after the lemon law. Lemon law doesn't allow you to go after the lemon law, to change the lemon law. But if the product is not defective, you can say non-refundable, non-exchangeable. So your contract can still say these goods are non-returnable, non-exchangeable. But once the consumer comes to you and say it's a lemon, these two words is out of the contract. It will be deleted. You still have to either repair, replace, exchange, or refund. Okay? So you don't have to change your contract, you can still use the old contract, but understand once it's a lemon, that particular clause about non-exchangeable, non-refundable does not apply. Okay? You cannot say the lemon law doesn't apply to me. I sell you whatever product, I don't care. You cannot do anything to me. Cannot a lemon law says you cannot go against the lemon law. The four R's you cannot go against. Okay. Okay, under the Road Traffic Act, if your car is new, less than one year, you try to repair three times, cannot repair, you can get a new car with the old COE. This for people who own cars or intend to own cars. is very important to you. Otherwise, you're talking about TV. It's not so relevant. Okay? Anyone interested about cars? Then I just go through already. Okay, not, not so important. It means in Singapore, you get a, new C you get a COE with a new car. Something different from other countries. We are the only country where they give you a COE with a new car. And then the old car, they have to scrap it or export it. Okay? Within one month, they have to scrap it. Auctions and competitive tenders, lemon law doesn't apply. So you buy something under the auction, lemon law doesn't apply. But sale of goods act may apply, certain things may apply. Of course, you must sell goods that match and discreet for purposes I've mentioned under the Sale of Goods, under the Higher Purchase Act. Higher Purchase Act also applies, Lemon Law applies. So if I higher purchase a car to you for five years, you pay by installment. If during the five years there's something wrong with the car, the higher purchase company must replace the car with the equivalent car or give you a new car. The Higher Purchase Act has been amended to let the higher uh, Lemon Law apply also. So you hire purchase a car, you hire purchase furniture. Last time, hire purchasing of furniture is very common. Now the only thing left is hire purchase of cars. So lemon law will apply to hire purchase. 
you will also not be held liable, which are specifically pointed out to the consumer before the transaction. So if I show you, I tell you, and then you take it knowing it, I'm not liable. If I can see it, I cannot pretend to be blind. This is what I already mentioned. So when you deliver furniture, dress is shown. If there's a defect, you can tell the consumer, I'm selling you a dress that is torn on the side. You still want to buy, you want to buy, then you accept it. You deliver the furniture, you must give the company, the consumer a chance to inspect the furniture when you deliver it to his house. Don't just give the furniture to him and sign and ask him to sign. Everything is all right. Give him a chance to look at the furniture for any defects. Okay, this is to improve our system to come up to U U UK, US, make it more transparent. It applies contract entered into after first on or after 1st of September, delivered on or after 1st of September, right? So today you are safe. Demon law today does not apply to you. Anybody buy any goods today on 2nd September come to you, say sorry, Lemon law don't apply, but sale of goods act will apply, other contract law will apply. So people are saying don't buy cars now, wait until 1st September. So uh, that is the trick now. Nah? Okay. So because of this, the CPFTA, Lemon Law is under the Consumer Protection Fair Trading Act. Amendments are, are being made and Higher Purchase Act and Road Traffic Act. You can seek guidance from us. Already some retailers having these four R's already. So they say it's okay. Even before the Lemon Law, they have the four R's and they're doing well. Business is doing well. You also have the right against the manufacturer. I say Nokia gives you a warranty for the Nokia handphone. You can sue the Singtel because they are the one who sell you. You can also sue Nokia. But you sue Nokia not under Lemon Law, but under your collateral contract with Nokia. Because when they give you the warranty, there is a contract between the consumer and Nokia over the warranty. But it's not about Lemon Law, it's about the warranty. You as a, manufa as a retailer, if you compensate the consumer, you can ask your manufacturer, hey, you giving, you're giving me a defective under my contract with you, you're supposed to also return to me the money. But that is between you and the manufacturer. That is not lemon law. That is your normal contract. Tighten up your contract with your manufacturer. Make sure if you compensate the consumer, you can go after the manufacturer. Because anyway, it's defect. It's not your defect. You didn't cause the defect. It's defect is because the manufacturer. So it's for you to actually improve the quality of the product from your manufacturer. Don't just take some manufacturer that gives you lousy product. Okay? There's a warranty cases. Uh, not all products come with warranties. So if you warranties, consumer can also go after the warranty provider. This act doesn't replace the sale of goods act, other acts. There are many, many acts in Singapore. This act is in addition to the sale of goods act. It improves our standards, foster good business practice, there was consultation, description, description. Retailer says for only for unscrupulous retailers you will affect. For honest retailers, it will be no problem. So all of you are honest retailers, you shouldn't have a problem. Okay, this is the feedback given by retailers. Members, of course, members of the public are generally supportive. You can visit our website. You can visit Ministry of Trade Industry website. They got 57 frequently asked questions. Go there and check. Then you know more about Lemon Law. You have the notes also, the notes a bit different, but the message is still the same. Okay, FAQs on website. Okay, I finished. Any question? No question. Okay, then I hand over to Zoe. Okay, thank you.